In this video I'll show you how to call a conditioned overlay from Interform 400. First of all, introduction to the conditioned overlay, what it is. A little heads up, just remember to save the main overlay before you actually proceed. How to select the condition in the spool file for calling this other overlay. Uh, the blank conditional text, what does it do? How to select the spool file lines that we're going to take from the main overlay and put into the conditioned overlay. How to create it and, and edit this other overlay that we're calling if a condition is true. Then we're going to, to show you how to add and all kinds of elements and especially the remap and the tabulators, how to do that uh, in the conditioned overlay. The conditioned overlay can be positioned in a fixed position or it can be positioned relative to where we find a condition and I'll show you how to specify uh, both. Finally, it's possible to push the spool file up and down if we call this uh, conditioned overlay and I'll show you how to do that through the vertical repositioning. And finally, a, a little tip, if you find that you have made a design and your conditioned overlay is not triggered for some reason, then you might wonder why and uh, I'll give you a tip of, of what the usual suspect is. So if we look at the spool file, it's possible to scan the spool file for specific contents and when we find a trigger, then we can call another overlay to place whatever elements you have inserted in there. If we simply call our conditioned overlay, you first see this message, please save your overlay to be able to select a sub overlay. So what we need to, first of all to do is to save the main overlay. I'll do that here. So I save it as main. Now the message has uh, disappeared. Now we want to select the spool file lines that we're going to scan. So I can do that with the left mouse key and simply drag over the lines that I want to, to scan. So you can see immediately the lines are copied down here. The positions in each line should fit a certain condition. So with the right mouse key I can now drag, for instance, only selecting position 8 and it's copied directly down to here. So in this case I will call my sub overlay only if I find a capital R in position 8. For these co comparisons I can say that my text should be equal to a fixed text, should be greater than and then of course it's comparing the two texts uh, character by character where the first one is the most significant. Less than, uh, not equal, acceptable characters meaning that if I type a list, if I do for instance like this, then every character in the interval that I've stated here must be one of the characters that I've listed here. So in this way I can check if, if position 8 is uh, numeric. The U option is just exactly the opposite of A. So if A is not true then U will be true and opposite. In this case we will trigger this if we find an R. The blank conditional text show here. So you can see if I say blank conditional text then if the condition is true then we can remove that text immediately. So you just should just take care that you won't need that text for anything else afterwards. Uh, another way to delete that text could be for instance to use a tabulator afterwards to remove any remaining text or you could remove that data in the conditioned overlay. So I'll remove that. In the bottom here we can tell how many spool file lines we're going to transfer from the main overlay into the conditioned overlay if this condition is true. If I go with zero then no spool file data is available in the conditioned overlay. Instead if I change it to one then when the condition is true it will cut out that line and that line will no longer be available in the main overlay. 
and it will be transferred onto the condition overlay where you can do remaps and tabulators in order to change that. So that is a requirement in order to, to use remaps or tabulators in the conditioned overlay. Uh, instead of stating here a fixed number, you can also go with the asterisk var uh, until another is true. If you go with this option, then all spool file data in the interval of lines here will be transferred onto the conditioned overlay until another conditioned overlay is true. So it might be the same condition that is true further down on the page, or it could simply be another condition uh, later on for another overlay uh, that is true. In this case, I'm just selecting one single line. So now I'm pretty much prepared to go on and create and edit my uh, conditioned overlay. So first of all, I need to create it. If it already existed, I could simply open it here and select it from the list of the overlays in the same file set as my main overlay, or I can create it now. So I can call it condition, save, and now I can see it here. What you see here between top and bottom are of course the elements uh, in the main overlay, but if you extend this you can even look at the list of elements inside of the conditioned overlay, which of course now is empty uh, as we have just created it. But now I can go on and edit the conditioned overlay, and as soon as I do that, this line is now red, italic, and bold. So it's really pointing out that we are no longer in the main overlay, but we're actually editing the conditioned overlay. You may remember that I said here to take one line of spool data and move that on to the conditioned overlay. So that is now available in my conditioned overlay. And if we want to look at the spool file with the eyes of the conditioned overlay, then we need to, after opening this for edit, you need to click the conditional here. If this list is empty, there are no lines, then it's either because the condition isn't true in any line on, on this current page that we're looking at, or uh, you have forgotten to move that line of data onto the conditioned overlay. So now we can use the, any of the, the normal elements that we are using, uh, lines, uh, images, and frames, and also the tabulator and the remap. Only for these two, the tabulator and the remap, you need to, to refer to the conditional uh, tab up here. So with the remap, I can now click whatever text I want to remap and place in the new position and select the font and so on as you would normally do. As soon as I started editing the conditioned overlay, the top of the result view here became gray and the gray area up here is is an unreachable area. That's a, this is actually zero from the top, so uh, you cannot have a negative value here of a of a push of a, an element. So that's why it will drop down to the very top of the page if I try to place it up in in the unreachable area. If you really want to position it higher, up, then uh, you need to reposition the conditioned overlay. So of course, just before I show you that, I will just show you that, that you could use your, any of your, your normal elements here, the frame uh, and so on, just for for adding all sorts of, of normal elements. That is, is possible, of course, here to add as well. But uh, we were talking about the, the position here of the conditioned overlay. The conditioned overlay is as default let me just first of all go back to my main overlay. So now I will close and save my conditioned overlay with the changes I've just done. And now you can see that this line is now black. So we are now back to the main overlay. The position of the conditioned overlay is something that you can state here. As default, these are the settings. So um, this means that the conditioned overlay will normally be placed relative to where the original spool file line were, uh, was placed. So that is why the conditioned overlay would be placed right here. 
and if you the condition was true for multiple lines, if you for instance were scanning some some detail lines, then it would be placed relative to that line uh, where the the trigger was found. You saw previously the, the, the gray area where we couldn't reach in, in the condition only. If you want to to reach that area, then it's possible to reposition the conditioned overlay either with a plus or a minus and that displacement you can type it in here in the measurement that you have chosen inches or centimeters so if I say for instance one here then it's the conditioned overlay is moved one centimeter down or minus one and it's moved upwards and then of course I can reach any area in uh, the spool file if you want to place something in a fixed position no matter where the condition was found then you can use option A here for both the vertical and the, the horizontal displacement and then it will be placed in a fixed position no matter where we found the condition so you, in this case it's printed up here so we are scanning so that could be used for instance for scanning a lot of lines and then for instance inserting a logo in a fixed position if that trigger was found anywhere let me just rem change this back to zero apart from repositioning the sub overlay you can also use this vertical repositioning to to um, reposition not only that but also the subsequent lines of the spool file and yeah first of all we, c we can uh, take the, the actual position here and and before I, I go further I should mention that this vertical repositioning only works if you have moved one line at least one spool file line onto the conditioned overlay so for the repositioning here we can push the conditioned overlay and the spool file lines coming afterwards up or down and you can do that with this uh, size over here so we we are using the, the pills so you as you might remember 240 pills equals one inch so if I want to move everything one line upwards I could go with minus 40 because I know my line distance is 40 so not only the conditioned overlay with the contents is moved upwards but also any subsequent spool file lines so we're simply dragging the complete spool file uh, if we find this condition is true we can also of course also push it downwards by having a positive number other options here is that we can place it relative to the last non-blank input line so we might want to move this upwards to actually ignore those blank lines in between so if I'm doing this and then I need to type in a displacement for instance 40 then it will be positioned one line downwards so we can do a single one like this the last option here reposition after execute of sub overlay is a way to reposition any subsequent uh, spool file lines depending on the position of the remaps in your conditioned overlay so the position from the top of the remap that is the furthest down on the page will decide for the position of the, the subsequent uh, spool file lines so that actually covers uh, the options you have for your conditioned overlay final uh, tip is that if your conditioned overlay is not triggered for some reason then uh, you might wonder what could be the reason for that and let me just illustrate that by doing a remap window of this placing it up right here and then you might notice that the conditioned overlay here overlay is never called uh, uh, it's all the text has actually disappeared because the remap has removed all of this data and placed it up here but if I remove my blank input text from my remap then it's still available and then we have both a remap and a conditioned overlay uh, that, that can see that spool file 
data. That covers uh, the introduction to the conditioned overlay. For additional information, I suggest you check out the other videos, uh, the manual, or contact your local Interform 400 support. Thank you.